Are you aware of the differences in how to size the width of ladder type cable trays compared to solid bottom cable trays? In my previous video, I covered the sizing of ladder type cable trays for multi-conductor cables rated below 2000 volts. In this session, I will focus on sizing solid bottom cable trays, referencing section 392.22 a 3 of the National Electrical Code. By the end of this discussion, you'll understand the distinctions between the two. So, let's dive in. Section 392.22 a 3 Solid Bottom Cable Trays with Mixed Cables In solid bottom cable trays that contain multi-conductor power or lighting cables, or any combination of multi-conductor power, lighting, control, and signal cables, the maximum number of cables must adhere to the guideline under subsections 392.22 a 3a 2 c Section 392.22 a 3a states that in cases where all the cables are 4 aught awg or larger the sum of the diameters of all cables shall not exceed 90 percent of the cable tray width and the cables shall be installed in a single layer for instance we have three 4 aught awg cables two 250 kc mil cables and one 300 kc mil cable all of which are xhhw pvc three core type tc power cables what is the minimum width required for a solid bottom type cable tray? The first step is to determine the nominal diameter of each cable, which can be found in the catalog data. The nominal diameter for the 4 aught AWG cable is 1.506 inches. Since there are three of these cables, their total diameter is 4.518 inches. For the two 250 kc mil cables, the nominal diameter is 1.653 inches, giving a total diameter of 3.306 inches. The nominal diameter for the 300 kc mil cable is 1.827 inches, and for three cables, the total is 5.581 inches. Adding these together, the total diameter of all the cables is 13.305 inches. Dividing this by 90% will give us 14.47 inches to determine the minimum width of the solid bottom cable tray. Therefore, the minimum inside width of the solid bottom cable tray should be 16 inches or 400 millimeters. While section 392.22, a, 3, b, where all of the cables are smaller than 4 aught awg, the sum of the cross-sectional areas of all cables shall not exceed the maximum allowable cable fill area specified in column 3 of table 392.22, a, for the appropriate cable tray width. This table provides the maximum allowable cable fill area for multi-conductor cables rated 2000 volts or less installed in the ladder, ventilated trough, or solid bottom cable trays. I have already discussed this in my previous video. Let's have an example. To easily understand, we have three 3 aught awg cables, three 2 aught awg cables, and one 1 aught awg cable, all of which are XHHW, PVC, 3 core, type TC power cables. What is the minimum width required for a solid bottom cable tray? The overall cross-sectional area for the 3 3 aught AWG cables is 4.42 square inches, for the 3 2 aught AWG cables is 3.85 square inches, and for the 1 aught AWG cable is 1.105 square inches. The procedure for calculating the cross-sectional area was shown in my previous video. Adding these together, the total cross-sectional area of all the cables is 9.48 square inches. Since a 225 mm, 9-inch, solid bottom cable tray has a maximum capacity of 8 square inches, the minimum inside width required for the solid bottom cable tray, as specified in Table 392.22, a 1, column 3, is 300 mm, 12 inches. Section 392.22, a 3, c where 4 aught AWG or larger cables are installed in the same cable tray with cables smaller than 4 aught AWG. The sum of the cross-sectional areas of all cables smaller than 4 aught AWG shall not exceed the maximum allowable fill area resulting from the computation in column 4 of table 392.22, A1, for the appropriate cable tray width. The 4 aught AWG and larger cables shall be installed in a single layer, and no other cables shall be placed on them. This subsection is the combination of the two subsections 392.22, a, 3, a, and 392.22, a, 3, b. 
where the cable tray contains a mix of 4 aught AWG or larger cables and cables smaller than 4 aught AWG. As per this subsection, the total cross-sectional area of all the cables smaller than 4 aught AWG must not exceed the maximum allowable fill area calculated using column 4 of table 392.22. A. 1. For the corresponding cable tray width. To understand this, let's have an example by combining the two previous examples. Since we calculated the total width of the 4 aught AWG and larger and the total cross-sectional area of a multiconductor smaller than 4 aught AWG we can now determine the minimum size of the inside diameter of the cable tray. For the cable tray installation, cables smaller than 4 aught AWG have a total cross-sectional area of 9.48 square inches. For cables that are 4 aught AWG or larger, the total overall diameter is 13.305 inches, which we designate as SD as per column 4 of the table. By adding the 9.48 square inches from the smaller cables to SD, the total fill area comes to 13.305 plus 9.48, equaling 22.785 square inches. Note that this sum is over the limit of 22 square inches, which is the maximum permitted fill given in column 3 for a 24 inches wide cable tray. Column 3 shows that a 30 inches wide tray, with 27.5 square inches fill capacity, would be required for the 22.785 square inches determined from the calculation of column 4, table 392.22, A, 1. Therefore, to accommodate the 25.45 square inches of fill, a 30 inches, 750 millimeters, wide cable tray should be used. Thank you all for watching.